What's a funny memory you have that if you told someone, they'd think you're lying? Story 1. This was a couple of years ago, but I pulled up to a stoplight and another vehicle in the next lane also comes to a stop. The car is filled with what looks like high school kids. The kid in the passenger seat notices me, taps on his window, and starts doing the universal sign for rock, paper, scissors. I look at the light, which is still red, and immediately think, screw it, and play along. So we start. One, two, three, shoot, and we tie. One, two, three, shoot, we tie again. This keeps happening. All the kids in the other car are involved and are screaming like, whoa, every time we tie. We literally got off like 15 rounds of rock, paper, scissors and tied every single game until the light turned green. I'm still high from that and hope all those guys are doing well. Story two. I was driving a friend home to Indianapolis from Holy Cross in South Bend. We got pulled over for speeding and the cop asked me, son, do you know how fast you were going? To which I replied with a straight face and no sarcasm, well, my cruise control was set at 88, so I'm guessing somewhere in the vicinity of 88. I've never seen such a confused look on a person's face. He proceeds to ask if I can step out of my vehicle and into his so he can talk to me while he writes me a ticket. I comply, and as he's writing me up, he's explaining to me how he had to do his sheriff training in Indianapolis. He said that the one thing that amazed him was how fast locals drive, especially on I-465, and he understands why I'm conditioned to do so. As soon as he's done with the ticket, he turns to me and says, So here's the deal. You're the first motorist to ever admit to me you knew you were speeding, so I'm going to cut you a break. If you can make it back to Indy without getting another ticket, I won't turn this one in. But if you do, you're getting two. I slowed down for the rest of the drive. Story 3. A friend once called the wrong number, got the wrong house, and had the right person pick up. So, I was at work, replacing a modem for my boss. I'd removed the modem and connected a telephone to test that it had a dial tone. Soon after, the phone rang. It didn't make much sense because that phone line had only been used for outgoing calls from the computer. When I picked up, the person on the other line just said, Hey man, you want to see a movie later? I recognized the voice too. It was a friend of mine. I was really confused for a second and said something like, Josh, how did you get this number? He said he called my home phone number. He must have misdialed my number and accidentally dialed the number for my boss's modem line at work. He called the wrong number, got the wrong house, and the right person picked up on a phone that had only been connected for two minutes in the past two years. The odds must be astronomical. It's just a weird coincidence that I'll always remember. Story 4. I once checked in at a restaurant and gave the hostess my name to hold my slot. She then asked for my last name since the person below shared my first name. When I told her my last name, she looked at me like I was lying. The person below had my first and last name. She laughed and introduced us, and we took a pic. I've never met someone with the same first and last name since. Story 5. I went to see Mitch Hedberg do a stand-up comedy. We stayed around a while, hoping to see him leaving. He never materialized, though, so my husband and I walked toward our car. As we were walking, we heard a woman yell from an alley, Hey, Mitch Hedberg is back here signing autographs. We walked around the corner behind a scary old building. It was like 1 a.m. and pretty dark. There was Mitch Hedberg and no other fans, just him and his wife, who had been the ones to yell about autographs. He was very and super lovely. He hugged my husband and me and told us what his fans mean to him. He took pictures of us for his scrapbook page online. He was also hilarious. We were just there behind a building at 1 a.m. with Mitch Hedberg and his wife, laughing and hugging deep into the wee hours. When I tell people this, they go silent, and I'm not sure why. I figure they don't believe it. Story 6. I peed on a bear once at 12 or 13. Some background, I lived in a mountain cabin with some family aunts and cousins and stuff. The cabin was small, but we had several acres, so we had about four RV trailers for the rest of the family. Two were for my aunts, one was for And the last and closest smallest was for children, which were just my brother and me at the time. Anyhow. It was a cold, wintry day with fresh snow. I wake up having to piss so bad I'm surprised I didn't wet the bed. I'm groggy as hell, and my eyes are barely open as I head to the trailer door and open it, starting my morning leak. I did not notice the bear less than two feet away, so close I could have pet him if I leaned a bit forward with his head in the garbage can until I was halfway done when it moved. So, of course, I turned my whole body in my half-asleep state to see what moved, 
and I finally notice a giant brown furry thing. I'm pissing all over its hind left thigh and leg as I'm wondering what it is. The bear lifts its head and looks at me. We stare at each other for a moment as my actions begin to dawn on me. Story 7 I did pet shop work in college and got asked to fill in a few graveyard shifts at a nearby store. Just me alone, unloading and stocking. There was an African gray parrot in there, and before I started to make a bunch of noise with the forklift and pallet jack, I went up and tried to give it a calm hello so it wouldn't be startled by me as I was moving around. I've always been fascinated by them. It just slowly turned its head like an ancient magic statue, looked me in the eye, and went, meh, then just as slowly turned back. Hardest burn I've ever gotten. Story 8 So I worked for the IRS, collecting taxes several years ago. I had seized someone's car, and the IRS salespeople were in the process of selling it. IRS procedures around some of this stuff are ancient. One of the procedures is to post a notice of sale in three public locations. So I go to the library to post a notice of sale. The person on the ground floor says that I'll have to talk to Steve on the second floor to see if it's okay for me to post the notice of sale on the bulletin board. I walk up the stairs and see a guy sitting at the desk. Are you Steve? Who's asking? The IRS? He says in a playful manner. Long pause. Yes, in fact. My name is... Just about falls out of his chair. Jesus Christ. I've been using that joke for 20 years. I never thought anyone would ever say yes. Story 9. I worked at this restaurant that was near a dueling piano bar. We usually gave them half off. They would pour us cheap, super stiff drinks. As such, we would tend to go there if one of us had a birthday or something. One night we were there, and it was a massively busy night. We were all just standing around and drinking, enjoying ourselves, and trying to ignore the scores of frat boys and sorority girls that typically frequented that establishment. That's when these two older dudes, a white guy and an Indian guy, approached us and asked if we had any we could sell them. They said we looked like the guys to talk to. To be fair, they were correct. There were eight of us there, and between us, we probably had at least four ounces. They didn't need much, they told us, just something for the night. Obvious cop move, right? We told them as much, letting them know we weren't there to get arrested and to screw off. They pleaded. We laughed. They walked away dejected. About an hour later, the piano players, remember, dueling piano bar, announced that they had found out they had some special guests in the audience. No doubt would be playing in Dallas the next night and the guitarist and bass player were in the audience. If we all asked nicely, maybe they would come to play a couple songs with them. Lo and behold, the older white dude and Indian dude walked up on stage and played Just a Girl and Spiderwebs with the fine folks of the dueling piano bar. And that's the story of the time we didn't sell to no doubt because they looked like freaking cops. Story 10. Background. My parents live in an old house, and my brother moved into one that's a bit of a fixer-upper. My dad knows how to do carpentry, electrical, and plumbing, and passed this knowledge on to us through home renovations. I am forbidden from using the phrase, hey guys, wouldn't it be hilarious if, because every time I do, that thing happens in the worst way possible, even if it's something wild and implausible. Would it be hilarious if the old porch was solid concrete? It was, with one inch thick rebar holding it together. Wouldn't it be hilarious if that wire was still live? It was, and power to the entire house was shut off. Someone wired this outlet in before the circuit breakers. Wouldn't it be hilarious if that old pipe was full of water still? Brother cut into it, and water began gushing out. Wouldn't it be hilarious if this trellis was holding up the entire wall? Wall began rapidly sagging down because the damn trellis was structurally integral. Story 11 In college, I was walking to class and a thunderstorm hit, but I had just gotten a girlfriend and I was in the best mood of my life, so I was just getting soaked and smiling from ear to ear. A guy walked by with an umbrella. I smiled at him and said hi. He took down his umbrella and got soaked with me, and we proceeded to talk about how moments like these are what make life magical, if only we let ourselves experience them. A 20-minute conversation later, the storm stopped and we went our separate ways. My new girlfriend... A cognitive science major saw me and ran over to me. She said, why didn't you call me? You know Oliver Sacks is one of my heroes. That was Oliver Sacks? Apparently, he was a speaker that night at a neuroscience conference. He also has prosopagnosia, face blindness. So it's possible that he thought we knew each other when I said hi. Story 12. Many, many, many moons ago, 
I was 15 at the time. We were at a house party. We were all drinking and smoking the usual teenage nonsense. My parents were pretty cool in that they knew what we were doing and knew they couldn't stop it. So they followed the, don't get in a car if someone's been drinking, call us and we'll come get you. So around 11.30 p.m. or so, I called my dad and said, I need a ride. We were on the edge of town, right where it starts to become rural. So I asked my dad, can you meet us at insert intersection? Myself and my friend walked down to the intersection of a semi-rural dark road. And my friend at the time drank too much, decided he needed to stick his fingers down his throat and get rid of some of the liquor in his system. So there he is, retching his guts out on the side of the road. A car passes and I see a light bar on top. It's a cop. He hits his brakes. I say, aw, snap, thinking we're about to get jammed up again for drinking underage, when suddenly, crash! The cop gets rear-ended by another cop. Don't know how or why. I just know that I watched one cop slam into the back of another cop car. I did not need to be told that was my cue to exit. Me and my friend booked it out of there. About 10 minutes later, we circled the block and came around from the opposite direction we ran, doing our best what happened just as my dad pulled up. Story 13. I was playing basketball in the park with my mom. Neither of us was very athletic. We were just having fun. Some kid was hanging around us, and we weren't trying to be rude, so we let him. After a few minutes of some of the worst questions I've ever heard, he asked me if I could throw the ball at the basket backward. I said, sure. See, had he asked if I could make it backward, I would have said no. But he only asked if I could throw it backward, which I could. My mom knew what I was doing. Hell, I picked up so much from her growing up that it was probably her idea before I said anything. I took a half-hearted peek at the basket and turned around. No warm-up, just let the ball fly. I turned back around to watch the obvious miss. I started to say, see, I threw it at the basket. But all I got out of my mouth was, see, and then the ball went in. Swish, nothing but net. Backboard, that thing never even hit the rim. I don't have the will to keep a straight face if I looked at the kid. I looked at my mom and said, just like that. She was almost as surprised as I was. That kid told me he didn't think I could do it again. Mama beat me to it this time and said, I think it's your turn. He left us alone soon after. Story 14. I got saved during a blizzard in the Alps by a big purple cow. I was skiing in the Alps with some friends and we were off-piste doing some jumps and stuff. I was at the back of the group and fell and twisted my knee, not quite landing a jump. Managed to get myself a bit lost as a blizzard set in and I couldn't see. Carefully scrambled around on my dodgy knee for a bit and thought I was about to end up in a fair amount of trouble. Then, out of the snow appeared my purple angel. A purple shape came out of the blizzard, which as it got closer appeared to be an upright purple cow on skis. Turns out, it was the Milka Chocolate mascot, a guy dressed in a purple cow costume, skiing about the hills, dishing out chocolate. He skied right up to me and said, Hey man, you okay? You want some chocolate? He then skied back to the piste with me and took me to the nearest bar to get a beer. Guess who else is in the bar? My friends were getting increasingly concerned that they'd lost me. Milka Man dished out some more chocolate to everyone and skied off never to be seen again. Thank you, Purple Cow Angel. You saved me that day and gave me chocolate. Story 15. A friend and I were hired by a police officer in our small town to help train police officers and make a training video. They gave us weapons to hide on our bodies. I put a switchblade up in my hair. Then we drove to a dirt road and were only told, when you see us come around the corner, floor it. That was it. That was all that we were told. When we saw the car, we floored it and went racing down the road. The police car followed us into the road with a gravel field that we'd pulled off into. The captain was already there, set up and ready to film his officers. They came screaming in with road dust and bluster, yelling at us to get out of the car. I can't even believe that I'm writing this. I am assuming that they were unloaded, but no one ever said anything and we were never asked. We had no idea that it was going to go down this way. They had their guns out and were yelling, using the speaker on their car, get out of the car, get out of the car. We genuinely flipped out now and the adrenaline was so, so high. We put our hands up, she threw the keys and we took off running. We got tackled and frisked. I tore my pants and my shirt and the officer didn't find the knife in my hair. It was the 90s and my hair was pretty big. I got put into the back of the car. The captain, filming officer, was standing in front of the car to film through the window. I could reach up from the back into the front seat and was able to get the gun and pull it into the back seat without him noticing. 
I was holding it up so that the filmer could see that I was able to get the gun, and I pulled the switchblade out of my hair to show that it had been missed too. My friend was put into another car. Then it was over, and we got a small drink from Dairy Queen as payment. It all went so badly that I heard that the tape was not really used, and I wonder where it went, and would have loved to have been a fly on the wall when they all talked about what they'd done. It was such a completely wild and surreal experience. When we talk about it now, we howl with laughter at how absurd and probably illegal it was, and no one can believe that it really happened. The small drink coupon really puts it over the top. Story 16. I moved to a new city and figured I would go for a drive and get the lay of the land. At a stop sign, trying to turn right, looking left at traffic, see my chance and turn right without looking. A pedestrian was crossing in front of me and I hit him. Not super hard, but hard enough for him to kind of roll up on my hood. He got off and stood up. I rolled my window down and apologized, but he was kind of like Eric Idle in National Lampoon's European Vacation. He kept apologizing, saying it was his fault, just a flesh wound, etc. I decided my sightseeing tour should come to an end after running someone down in the street. I got a little turned around before finding my bearings. I was headed up a hill toward my new place and didn't realize my lane was ending. I didn't see the car in my blind spot and totally cut them off, and our cars very lightly bumped. Immediately stopped next to the car I hit at a red light. The driver was the pedestrian I ran over 20 minutes ago, 5 miles away. Again, he was disturbingly polite, apologized to me, and did not want to exchange insurance info. There was no damage. Story 17 I used to go to uni with this guy named Sam. Sam was a pretty quirky guy. We had classes together twice a week and were pretty new friends. Anyway, I was walking down the strip of shops between the dorms and the campus and I saw Sam across the road. I walk up to him, say hi, and be friendly. After a short conversation, I excuse myself and say, Bye, Sam. I'm not Sam. No way. It's Sam. Talks the same way. Held the conversation fine. And I noticed nothing different. He claims to be Sam's identical twin brother. I call Sam on his crap. Pretending to be his own twin is the kind of crap I'd expect out of Sam after knowing him for three months. No, no, he insists. He's not Sam. Freaking prove it, Sam. I make this complete stranger who has no idea who I was pull out photo identification like I'm the campus police. Is it Sam? Nope. Identical twin brother that Sam just never mentioned. What the hell? How have I known this guy for three months and not known about his twin brother? I bet this freak has set me up. I go and confront Sam about it before our lecture later that day. I tell him the story. No way, says Sam. He doesn't believe my story. He doesn't believe I'd interrogate his brother and thinks I'm making crap up. I swear, it's all true, I say. Prove it, he says. He calls his brother. Freak says he has no idea what Sam's talking about. Sam's brother continues to claim to not recognize me for like seven more months until their birthday party, the only time I'd ever managed to get them in the same place. And Sam's twin makes me show my ID when I rock up to the party. Well, it finally all comes up well after everyone but Sam's twin forgot about it. Funny freaking identical in every way. Story 18 was walking and chatting with two friends, all of us in line, when suddenly the furthest away from me disappears from my peripheral vision. I look down and she's fallen face first to the ground, saying she stepped on something slippery. The only thing under her is a banana peel. The girl literally slipped on a banana peel. Story 19. When I was ditching the first period in high school, a cop was in front of me at 7-Eleven. The cashier couldn't break his 50, so I paid for his coffee with my stuff. He thanked me, we jabbed about me being late to school, and I noticed a tattoo on his neck and we joked about bad decisions. Two weeks later, I get caught in a speed trap and he sticks his head in my window. And he went, Coffee girl. And I went, tat neck, and got let off with a finger shake. Story 20. I was the most broke I have ever been living in the middle of nowhere. I was pulling my last $20 out of a gas station ATM. I hit the button and it spits out $60. I was only charged 20 on my account. It sounds like such a tall tale, but I swear it happened. 